talking about bees, there's a very big diversity of bees. There's at least 16,000 different types of bees known globally. South Africa alone has at least 1,200 different types of bees. This poster represents all of the different genera of bees that are known to exist within sub-Saharan Africa. Most of our bees are solitary, meaning that a, a single female will prepare a nest, provision it with food for laying her eggs. But there are several bees in the Apidae family that will form colonies, ranging from, a, from small colonies such as these carpenter bees, where a few females will cohabit, to the large, highly organized colonies such as honey bees that we are well familiar with from the Apis mellifera. These complex colonies can have up to 60,000 bees with a single queen that lays the eggs and a range of different tasks handled by the worker bees from going out foraging, the, the nurse bees that stay in the hive, the, the guard bees that protect the hive, etc. Of particular interest are the little stingless bees. These are tiny little bees that form complex colonies. They have a queen and workers. They don't sting at all. They're completely harmless. There's a very big diversity of them and they occur in many parts of the world. These bees here were filmed in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. But in, in Africa, we've got a very big variety, in southern Africa in particular. Dr. Connell Ardley has recently retired from the Agricultural Research Council in Pretoria. He's been studying the taxonomy of African bees for the past 40 years. He's introduced us to three types of bees that he keeps. We're not sure of the exact species identification of these bees as they're very difficult to identify from their morphology. That requires DNA sequencing. These plebina genus or mocha bees form underground hives. The hives are typically associated with, with termite mounds. Up in Limpopo, they're associated with the large termite mounds. And when areas of virgin bush get cleared, these colonies tend to get uprooted. That underground environment is a very stable environment. So these bees have adapted to a stable. They, they don't like being disturbed. They don't like being moved around. The colony was collected by Coral three years ago. And he noticed the little bees are bringing mud out of the hive on a regular basis, as we see in the picture here. Opening this hive after three years, Connell was surprised to find that the this hive structure hasn't changed at all. He had expected that these bees would, would fill that box, but it hasn't happened. Another group of bees is the Meliponeula genus. These are, are small little bees, also known as the robust stingless bees. They sp specifically form hives inside the hollow stems of camiphora trees. Camiphora trees generally don't get very big, so these bees haven't adapted to forming large, large hives, large colonies. The third group of stingless bees, the Hypertrigona genus, are the most common and widespread. Many people would know these as Mapani bees. But there are many different species and, and many of them are not associated with Mapani woodlands at all. They are best known from the Miombo woodlands up in Zambia and Tanzania. Keeping these bees is quite widespread up there. There are beekeepers that have managed to split swarms, but that's something that's not been achieved in South Africa yet. You're going to get any drama shots here unless something mm -hmm. goes wrong. These bees will adapt well to wooden box hives which can be moved around is easily these are the least sensitive bees and offer the most potential to be propagated a fascinating aspect of these bees is they they have, seem to have an incredible engineering foresight as we see in this newly established hive they've established their pollen store in the one corner of the box and in the opposite corner they've established their their brood this, this is a, a better established hive. This is heavily loaded with honey. But there's still a clear separation of the, the honey storage from the pollen storage. The, the brood chamber is a bit hidden. You've got to dig for it. But it's, it's there. They, these bees develop uh, an amazing sort of spiral helix structure for their brood. 
beautiful structure. I've got a few pictures off the internet showing examples of how they create these brood. These bees have got an incredible potential to produce honey. Despite their small size, they produce a lot of honey. The honey is different from the, the honey we are familiar with. It's got quite a tart taste, very much like cough syrup. In Tanzania, this honey is considered to have incredible medicinal properties, very much more so than regular honey, so it's highly sought after. There's a great deal that we can benefit from these little stingless bees. We need to, to conserve, we need to look after these bees, we need to learn more about them, and clearly there's a lot more that we've got to learn.